Well, those are almost circles. <laughs> so we're almost done, right? And uh, yes, it's a, a metaphor for the fact that this website is, is up, it's public. And it is actually nowhere near done. Anybody that has ever come to any of my lectures across the years, more than once, is painfully aware that my curse <laughs> is that I love to continue to evolve. I love the thought process of not just diving in more, but of teaching. And it is that process that has been so enabled by this thing. So I feel so, I feel so thankful that it's such a, this opportunity has unveiled itself. I've been working on content for personaltraining.com for quite some time, and, and a lot of you know that. In fact, a lot of you participated in the limited launch um, last November to help us kind of get some bugs worked out, and I think I sent out about 100 emails, and I think prior to this public launch of exerciseprofessional.com, I think we had about 400, 400 registrants, so I'm glad that the rest of you showed up. Um, that weren't necessarily invited, but it was great having you, and I hope that you enjoyed the content, and thanks for helping us work out some bugs and being patient in the process, because it's frustrating. Uh, it's funny that the people who make these things can't always foresee the things that are going to happen. But anyway, yeah, so along the way, right before the launch, got this great opportunity to not just have a, a name that appeared to offer a voice and education towards personal training, but it actually encompassed every version of a professional that might use exercise as a modality, be it a rehab professional, coach, personal trainer. There's a wide variety of, of people that quite frankly were taught to think we know about exercise. And there's so much that school has left out. There's so much that we assume because of what we have done. And we assume that's going to work for everybody. That's part of what this logo is about. There's so much to this. And we kind of encompassed it. I started this logo a long time ago. And I was glad these folks were willing to adopt it. Because it really speaks to the, the mission of one, if, if one circle represents knowledge, what we know. One represents what we do, which hopefully is an application of information, not just a repetition of history, right? <laughs> for better or for worse. With the other circle being delivery, which I think is a huge part of, call it bedside manner if you're talking about a physician, you know that old term. But the same idea, how, are you, how do you teach exercise? Is your delivery simply screaming and counting? That's not professional. I think any five-year-old could do that. So what needs to be done for the individual? Can we see exercise at a professional level? So that's where all this kind of started to come together. And again, what a tremendous opportunity. And one of the things that I'm most thankful for is time. <laughs> and you're going, why, were you getting ready to die? Well, I don't know, that's yet to be seen. But the bigger thing is, gosh, back in, my first national level presentation was at one of the first, and some people tell me it was the first, personal training certification. And I think I had two hours in the middle of that, two days? I think it was two days. And um, was immediately after that asked to be in charge of the hands-on instructors and develop the, some of the curriculum and be, in essence, a founding presenter um, as, we, as uh, they evolved that program and, and asked me to be an integral part of that, which was, wow, what a, what a gift. But I really rapidly found that my own endeavors to try to learn more, to present more. I needed more time and more time and more time. And man, they used to get frustrated with me, like, are you done yet? <laughs> you know? And uh, hopefully some of that helped somebody. But the big thing was that that two-hour presentation expanded into three and four in concert with some hands-on that, that made it come alive. I always, of course, focused on exercise mechanics. That has been my I was going to say one and only subject, but I've got to say in my mind it's really two. There is this textbook type of learning of exercise mechanics. Partially physics, 
partially structures and how they work, that kind of thing. Their idiosyncrasies among individuals will be part of the exercise piece of that puzzle to me. But then the application. The application of science to me is an entirely different endeavor. And I've always viewed those things that could be learned in a lecture and could be learned in a gym with individuals. Those were both necessities. In fact, I said things in a gym could be learned in a gym. They had to be. In my mind, there's no such thing as two-dimensional online hands-on. That's a joke. That's a marketing trick or something. I know it's easy, and we love easy, which is exactly why 10 years later I eventually left that organization. As I was learning more and more, words became a big deal in the industry back then. Certainly in my profession, the word sheer was around for a while in the 80s, but long before it was in fitness. Um, but it became popular with people talking about specific exercises in the fitness or training world or whatever. But it became not something to study. It was like, shear's bad. That's shear. That's got shear. That's got shear. It's like, well, I really want to know what this shear thing is before I start throwing in my two cents and making myself look like an idiot like they are. And the more I learned about it, I was like, wait a minute, let's, this is, we can calculate this relatively simple and you know, oversimplified manner, but look what this means. Do you realize all motion comes from the forces that also produce shear at a joint? So, is it scary in every joint? Is it the same thing every, is it even as bad as the one we're, ones we're worrying about? As I learned these things, I again needed more time. I know, they had to hate me. <laughs> so, um, but at the same time, as that course went to four days, that original organization's course, they started a more remedial one, and it was two days, and of course they found it made more money. Why? Well, humans, you know? If we can get a piece of paper that's the same size in two days instead of four, we're in. Forget that the information might be different. Forget that we might actually help our clients in a much more dramatic way, in a much more thorough and detailed way by learning more. And so our education historically is not actually for the client. It's for us to have a license, if you will, I use that term loosely because it's not a licensure act. We feel like we have the right to say anything we want to say and teach what we do for ourselves because we have a piece of paper instead of actually spending a lifetime learning to figure out more about clients, application, progression. So the progression of my information demanded that I start my own little organization. And so I did that. And um, it was funny because in, it was five days. I had five full days in the beginning. <laughs> of course that wasn't enough. So that became four two and a half day weekends, right? So what is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten days roughly. S separated apart, but you get it. Well then, as I continued to learn, and, and learning is not just more information. I would say that's actually the least important aspect of learning is gathering information, memorizing stuff. I don't want a surgeon, and I wouldn't call a surgeon good because of what they know. I care about what they do. So for me, learning was about learning how to be a better teacher, learning how to say it 500 ways, learning how to be a better listener. And I hope across the past 40 years, I've gotten a little bit better than that, better than I was at 13, 14, 15, 16, 20, whatever. And uh, so it kept growing and in the end, past 15 years, 10 years, whatever. There's, there's, it was a five weekend program, three and a half days each weekend. So it culminates into about 20 days worth of stuff. And, and two full weekends were um, lecture. The other three, three and a half day weekends were in the gym, doing, role playing, is this what you really want to look like and sound like as a trainer? Have you ever had anybody shine a mirror on you and go, dude, this is what you look like when you're doing this. This is what you sound like when you're saying this. 
How could we make this better for the client? And yeah, from a business point of view, potentially to make more money. To be the person, the professional that other that, that clients want to be with and feel like they, they don't just like you as a friend. That's great and has nothing to do with it really. It's about being what they need. So the lecture part, 56 hours of class across those two lecture weekends. Well, yes, as you can imagine, over the years, not enough. I had a three hour introduction to that mastery program. And I had to throw it out. I didn't even have time for introduction. The introduction was like, hi, let's get started. <laughs> that was kind of the beginning of it. So as I, it didn't stop me from learning. It didn't stop me from saying, man, this is important, and I've got to put this wedge in here, and this has got to go. And long story, well, you normally hear people say long story made short. I'm known for probably having people behind my back saying, Tom is all about long story made longer. So I did it again. But... Um, yeah, this is an opportunity where instead of having to squish an important subject matter and topic into 15 minutes in order to fit within the confines of a sitting in class weekend, I can now take the hour that that specific topic may actually deserve in order to help you better understand it, better apply it, better apply it, see where it fits in, see why it matters. This goes way beyond textbook, but the textbook becomes our language. The textbook becomes an understanding so that when people, people, everybody wants to talk about exercise and they want to talk about it if they think they're professionals. They want to talk about it in a really advanced way. Let's talk about this. All right, let's dive in. They can't keep up. They don't have the language. They don't have the understanding. And I don't mean they don't know the words. They don't know the meaning of enough principles to discuss exercise in detail. And what they do know is all too many times just sound bites. Sound bites, little snippets of words that sound really cool and are typically, typically the ammunition offered by what I prefer to call the articulate incompetent. I was reading a book of quotes one time and it said, beware the most dangerous person in any industry, the articulate incompetent. And I thought, man, that's brilliant. Because these people, man, they, they can talk. And if people go, listen to that person over there. They sound like they know what they're talking about. Yeah, but if you knew what they were talking about, you'd go, wow, that's empty and wrong. That's what I call social media, for the most part. So right now, what was two hours, that bulged into four, <laughs> in the late 80s, early, early 90s, became five days, then became 20 days. And now I have the opportunity to take 56 of those hours and expand them. And originally when I started this process, as I was developing what I mentioned before, personaltraining.com, um, I thought, hey, we're going to get to, a, I can't imagine having over 100 hours. I just couldn't imagine it coming from, you know, even what was left over from 56, those two weekends of lecture. Well, we're currently at about, I'm at 120 hours. And the reason why, the reason is because there are so many things that never got fleshed out. So many things that I haven't presented in years that I go back and look at, it's like, well, I was wrong right there and I could say that better and oh my gosh, I've learned so much more about this piece of that puzzle. And the expansion is not just for fun. It's not because I don't have anything to do. <laughs> it's because... It's the evolution of things. It's the evolution of information. It's the evolution of trying to be a teacher. I don't think teachers are people who just throw out information. Oh, there's, there's plenty of teachers that pretend to be teachers that just throw out information. Here, memorize this. Here, okay, well, now we're moving on to the next section. That's not education. That is an affront to the word teacher. I wish I could remember the quote from that old original introduction, but this, this guy who was a, a teacher said, you know, instead of teaching, I've given up on teaching, I'm paraphrasing crazy. I'm, I'm giving up on teaching, I'm only interested in learning. And I'm willing to share what I've learned, and hopefully it's helpful to share the way I learned it. See, that's the thing. It's not just memorizing stuff, can they see it? 
through the eyes of someone who's gone through the struggle. And they see it from the eyes of someone who knows what to do with it. So they may be better able to do something with it. So that's some really fun stuff. And that's what this exhaustive number of expanded hours, that's what it is. The evolution of information is not just a jumping around of biases. I've certainly had my biases and I still do. And I'm not entirely sure all biases are bad. I think the most important thing is that people know their biases and admit to them. So that others can go, well, in that context, I see what they're saying, but I'm not thinking of it that way. I'm not biased that way. That's not who I'm working with. That's not my goal. Goals are biases. Individuals, my 99-year-old client, demands a bias towards him. This information, though, the bias is being unbiased. The bias is offering a filter, if you will, to be able to look at things that are packaged for us. Some group exercise thing that has a name and somebody goes using that name, oh, is that good? It's like, well, that's just a name. Let's look at what's inside. It's what's inside that might be appropriate or inappropriate for someone at a given moment, for that client or for that patient. So now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting to true professionalism, something that's pretty much void in our industry. It's an industry of opinions. It's an industry of beliefs. And that's one reason it plays so well into social media. Social media, I don't know, I had a guy say this to me one time and I'm like, that is just <laughs> the most brilliant explanation of social media. He said, I, I think social media is kind of a, hey, look at me place for folks to be. And it's true. Posts are not necessarily altruistic. They're not trying to help others with their exercise information. They're trying to look smart. They're trying to look like, hey, I'm the expert. Now I'm being, that's a very general statement. And I know that in many cases I'm wrong about that. What's interesting is always, which, how do you take that? Do you take it as someone who goes, yeah, I see it all the time, I'm with you, Tom. Or do you take it as a person who goes, I am not that way. It's interesting what side you already chose. Well, I don't even know if I was talking to you or not. Think about that for a second. Anyway, yeah, social media, social media is kind of a mess. And I mean, I've used it recently on YouTube, for example, to, um, to present samples of this course library, these individual courses that we're plugging away at still to this day. And um, I need you to know that the samples, I don't think anything on social media is education. And my, my clips that clearly stated clip from some course number and some title, that's like a trailer. That's not education. It's an example. Man, you don't walk out of Sherwin-Williams with a little thing of paint this big on a piece of cardboard and go, oh, I'm going to paint my house. That's a sample. <laughs> it's about the same thing. It's a trailer of a movie. You don't watch the commercial, you know, on TV for two minutes and go, wow, I've seen that movie. It hasn't even come out yet. But you think the two minutes tells you everything? That's our world we live in right now. And social media plays into our lowest common denominator of human desires. And so... Um, yeah, I'm putting stuff out there for you to view what you might choose to purchase. Here's the type of presentation, because these presentations include an animation that I never was ever able to present before. The way I can show this on these videos is better than I've ever been able to do in a class. And that extends not just from eight hours of animation, eight hours of prep time in order to show you 10 minutes <laughs> on a lecture. But things like this light board, because standing here writing on a whiteboard is a lighting nightmare and for video. This hopefully enables you to learn. Plus, it's kind of cool. <laughs> but there's, there's other things like the split screen stuff. You see, when we were always looking at anatomy in class, number one, I'm trying to hold little balloons and stuff, you know, trying to hold bones together and all these things and 10 people trying to help. And then once you're kind of looking at it, each person is looking at it from a different point of view. It's not the best learning scenario. Well, it probably wasn't even a good one at all, to tell you the truth. But with this um, 
relatively low technology, we've created split screen videos for a lot of the anatomy stuff. And there's some examples on the, on the homepage of the site and certainly on the YouTube samples. But I wanted you to see how it's different. So many times, old students come back and it's been five years, maybe it's been two years, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so different. Now those are the people that are pay attention to details. Those are the people that are really trying to learn. And while it's, for the most part, the same manual with some adjustments, and it's the same subject and sometimes the same order, the clarity often is improved, hopefully. And that's what they often see, this is so different. And sometimes it is an entirely new section. When I came up with the strength profile section and the resistance profile section, totally, totally new at the point it was introduced. So people are like, oh, this is great. This brings so much together. But that's an interesting thing though. And people who would return, you know, mastery to me is about lifelong learning. It's not about a point of achievement. It's not about, oh yeah, now I'm tough. I can kick your ass. Oh, now I know everything. That's not mastery, right? There are so many people out there. And I actually, this is kind of frustrating. People that are misrepresenting themselves as, I have been to RTS. So they came to two days, or maybe to three two-day weekends of the most kindergarten offering we have or had at the time. And they speak as if they're in present tense. Yeah, yeah, I went to RTS, I know all that stuff. Listen. If you came to all of it five years ago, I mean in front of me, and we had a chance to actually do this thing the way, the way it had evolved at that point in time, five years later, you haven't been to what it is today. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people are like, why is it always changing? I ain't gotta tell you, if you're not changing, if you're not growing in terms of the way you see things, and that's another big piece, you leave here with a limited understanding of what I said because it was a dense amount of information, it was a lot. And the people that went home and immediately started studying went, oh my God, look what all we did and look what all we missed in this weekend. But then there's also the people who don't go home and study and they immediately start teaching it as if it's their own. And they weren't good enough to answer my questions in class and now they're holding themselves out there to be the expert. That's really interesting. Someone online the other day said, oh, I've got all of Tom's old information. Well, I don't know what that is because if it's, I haven't put out anything you could own since about 1997 or maybe that was repackaged in 2000, but the bottom line is you don't know anything probably about what's happened in the past 20 years. So that's the value of this. The way it's presented, the expansiveness, the time offered to trying to generate clarity and understanding. Oh my gosh, and the, up, the, the updates. One thing that always frustrated me, uh, based on what we we're just talking about, someone leaves, and very few people want to keep coming back to the same thing unless they're just really into the subject matter and like the restaurants I take them to or whatever. But I always wished, you know, people would come up to the front of class and they'd look at my, my manual I was teaching from. And sometimes in class, they would, it was obvious. I would stop in the middle of class, like, wait a minute, I'll make notes. And they look, there's pages of notes are on every page. There's like stuff written between the lines and better ways of saying this and please add, don't, Tom, don't forget to add this and that kind of stuff. And I always wished that I could like sneak into someone's brain and fill in the new stuff. I didn't necessarily want to sell it to them. I wanted them to say, I've been to RTS and I've had the opportunity, if I chose to, to look at what it is now. At least then, there was an opportunity. And that's what this thing also provides. And that's such a blessing because someone buys closed chains. Closed chains, something that was entirely presented in the beginning because of the misinformation and trying to get everybody to the science of it rather than the well, everything that happened from having a poor foundation and flawed definitions at the beginning, because if your foundation and your original definitions are flawed, everything you build on it's gonna be wrong. Well, that was a one hour lecture, even in the middle of 
what we had as a science one course. Kind of had enough time occasionally to do an hour and a half on that. Well, now it's an eight-hour lecture and still expanding. As I'm doing literature reviews and saying, here's what these folks say. What do you see in here? That kind of thing. So the nice thing is if you were to buy closed chains to study, well, two things. Number one, if you were interested in that subject, an awful lot of people are from a variety of backgrounds who would not want to come to an RTS course or another organization. They don't want to leave their team and join a new team because that's what we think of when we have an acronym we identify with and, oh, no, no, that information is in, under another acronym, another team. I, I don't want to do that. And quite frankly, if they just wanted to learn the realities of closed chain, they shouldn't have to sit through the rest of it if they don't want to. And that's the beauty of this. It's all a cart. You can purchase anything at any level, from the 1,000s to the 5,000s, or whatever they end up doing with other presenters and other things. But that all a cart thing allows you to dive in in the subject matter you're interested in. And then, of course, if there's something else related to that you would like to you know, use to expand that subject and your understanding of it, then just buy that one also. I love that idea. I also love uh, the updates. Because once you've purchased one of those, any update I do, which might be an addendum, it might be a correction. Oh, in this first lecture, this part, when I said this, that's, <laughs> I was so wrong when I said that. Or here's some new information, or here's a great example. I didn't have this example, this picture, this video. I didn't have this available when I did the original, but here it is. You see, when I put that into that topic as a product, as a course, everybody who already owns that topic, it's in their account. When they go to closed chain that they haven't looked at in three months, there's very likely to be a new piece in there you haven't seen before because I updated it and it updates across the board. I love that idea. That feels so great to me that if someone cares enough to be up to date, they can be without getting on an airplane. So that's the beauty of the lectures. You can sit anywhere and watch them. I can update them. Still have to have the hands on. There's no substitute for hands-on, as I mentioned. We will always have our hands-on courses, both the uh, lesser levels and the much more extravagant, what I prefer to call advanced hands-on labs, as opposed to just a practical session where not everybody gets to do every everything versus the small groups. Let's get into this and see how good we can get at helping people type of hands-on lab. So, gosh, there's a lot of information about all this stuff. Um, Regarding the social media thing, I think it's challenging for viewers. People that grew up with social media and for some reason trust the posts ex excessively, not just as entertainment, but as I mentioned, see, I don't think any of that's education. Education has prerequisites, it has foundations, it has things that could could probably be learned before other things to enable learning. Social media is just taking a bunch of stuff and throwing it against the wall. It is, as I mentioned, for a lot of people saying, hey, look at me. And my I guess my, my personal problem is that there's a lot of people out there that haven't been, well, they haven't been vetted. A lot of articulating competence that haven't been vetted. Know what I mean by vetting? Well, it would be something to, a, to the idea that someone's going to be a presidential candidate so there's extensive background checks, and I don't just mean formally, I mean like the press dives in. And they find out, for better or for worse, every little thing, whether it matters or not in being a good president. It's similar. Right now in social media, anybody can throw stuff up there, and if you sound like you know what you're talking about, or fit some physical bill for what people think you should look like to, to, to speak that information, whether it's accurate or not, you're considered an expert. They are considered an expert, and that's... That's lack of vetting. I had such a tremendous opportunity to, well, when I was coming up through the ranks in the late 80s, early 90s, and you were asked to present um, for an international lecture, a conference, and after a while, I was getting invited to places where I was sitting on round tables 
with people that I'd only heard of and only read. And I didn't ever, I don't think I ever met him. And the first thing you think, you know, ego-wise, you're like, wow, I <laughs> am really cool. I'm setting up here with these, these men and women that know their stuff. And then I'm like, oh no, I'm sitting up here with these men and women that know their stuff. <laughs> you learn very rapidly when you're in front of 1,500 people with five other people that have been published and within their own topics are considered to know their stuff. Well, you either look like the odd man out or you hold your own. This doesn't happen on social media. When you have the opportunities like I've had, and that's, to me it wasn't the opportunity now, I don't look at it as an opportunity to be the man with the people, <laughs> you know? It was the opportunity to actually become, quite frankly, what I thought I already was, and I had to put up or shut up. I had to welcome the confrontation that wasn't an emotional confrontation, it was a support demand for what I was saying. Social media doesn't demand that. Even the people that have live classes, they are typically with followers of their guru, not with true students. So they will commonly, oh, I love this guy, I love this guy. They're loving what he says, it doesn't matter. They don't know what he says, but they love him, they love her. They love the organization. They're now a part of a community. That's not vetting. Otherwise, Jim Jones would have been vetted now, if you don't know what Guiana was, you might go back and study a little history. When the co-director of sports medicine at the Mayo Clinic came to back in my five-day course, the first one that was my own, he's sitting in front of me in a group of 15 people, small. Nobody could escape, and especially for the guy in front. And he was a perfect gentleman, but I had to completely support everything I was saying. With a guy that was in charge of sports medicine, for what is arguably the most well-known clinic, medical authority in the world. That was an opportunity. Just him being there didn't make me matter. It didn't make me good. It's the opportunity offered by questioning me, by allowing me to support what I believed, to support what I had learned, to support my rationale for things, to support my application for a given individual. And we've been great friends ever since. So is your guru vetted? Here's something I would like to do, something I would love to do. These guys are, um, there's a, a subscription side being planned at some point. Now they've, you know, they say they need, hundreds of hours, obviously, before they can launch it. So you start paying by the month. You need to not run out of stuff to watch each month, right? So it's, it's ways in the works. But one of the things I'd like to present, you know, is a, here's an idea for you guys. Some interviews. Some interviews with these people. If they're willing, if they will accept the opportunity to be vetted, if they will accept the opportunity to prove how well they can support their information, if they will accept the opportunity to prove they're not an articulate incompetent, a poser, but they can actually welcome and enjoy a conversation with someone that will present some reasonable questions. And the answers to those questions, I'm not the one that would be judging whether these person are, people are now vetted or not. You, you would be. If it's on the subscription side, you would get that opportunity. And they would appear to become the experts they're holding themselves out as through that process. That would be such a tremendous opportunity. Another thing social media has created, not that plagiarism and the thievery of intellectual property, not that it hasn't always been around, but in people's quest for being the source, for being the expert, And even if someone's not on social media, just when they're working with their client, there, there's so many people out there throwing around sound bites, like 
about what you should or shouldn't do with your shoulder blades, about, well, there's a lot of things. There's an endless array of things. And you're, oh, your pecs work harder here, and you're, okay, the problem is they don't know where those things came from. So many things, as you know, exist, fade away. Someone creates a resurgence, revitalizes this idea. There are so many things, almost everything going on in this industry right now is old. I have people trying to support functional training as if they just came up with it yesterday, it was their idea, and everything they're saying to try to support it, now while some people are good at supporting what they do, too many times there's empty, valueless, what one friend of mine calls word salad types of support. So a lot of people aren't just stealing information. They don't understand that the person they learned it from didn't reference it because the person they learned it from didn't reference it. So there's three generations of thievery going on. And really it was only the first person who just thought everything is open for everybody. And there is this thing called intellectual property. There are trademarks, there are copyrights, there are patents. And these things, while nobody pays attention to them, apparently in our industry, are very real. And it would behoove all of us and raise our bar closer to being professionals if from the beginning, if we demanded from these people putting things out there on social media, if we demanded to hear their original work. And that's another reason I'm really ha glad to have this opportunity to be expansive with information. Things that people haven't heard in a long time because I don't have to, haven't had time to present it in a long time. But they can come to the source. Sorry if it sounds egotistical. But there are so many things being said out there now. Segmental proportions. Let's have a knee over toe discussion and here's the rationale and here's the patellofemoral issues and things that people are dabbling in that have been presenting for literally 30 years. And they're somewhere between inaccurate and just blatantly wrong blatantly off track. Someone told me this quote one time. Premature responsibility breeds superficiality. You take on the role of a teacher too soon, well, I made that mistake and I embarrassed myself beyond belief and that's part of the great opportunity I've had to know when to shut up, when to question what I'm saying, and that kind of thing. But the exercise information world that is associated with social media is so superficial because these people are not ready. They're just not ready. But that's okay. The problem is when you throw it out there on social media, you're basically saying, hey, everybody, look at me. Look how much I know. If you're going to throw it out there, be willing to get it chopped off. Okay? Have you ever heard anybody on social media? Oh, <laughs> when have you not heard this? Well... That's the best exercise. This is the best exercise. This is how you do a squat. Anybody that says this is the best exercise, anybody that says this is the way to do a squat, you know they're not an expert. They just proved it all by themselves because everything is contextual. The best exercise for who? For everyone from 9 to 99? Well, no, of course not, Tom. We're not talking about 99-year-olds then by definition, when you say the best and you don't say for who, then you're saying for everybody. That's why I can easily and justifiably say anybody who says this is the best exercise or here is a good exercise for glutes, good for who? Good for somebody with a hip replacement because people that have hip replacements do glute stuff post-operatively as part of rehabilitation. Part of us becoming a professional is adopting a professional language, learning how to speak, learning how to think, because what we say represents our clarity of thought or lack thereof. This is all a great opportunity for us. 
great opportunity. So, so here's the bottom line. If any of this is of interest to you, check out the YouTube stuff. See if you like some of the topics. See if it speaks to you at a level in which you're interested. If not, there's plenty more out there across the world of social media. But if you're a person who really understands the value, not just of the textbook stuff, because there's, I'm not a big fan of the people who can quote stuff, including textbooks, and can't do anything with a client, can't even do the exercise themselves. I'm not a fan of that. But if you see the blend, if you see the, the relationship that's demanded of a true professional to have a deep background in exploring science, not doing what schools offers us, offer us, universities just have a tendency to throw science out there and say, memorize it. Do they really explore it? Do they find out when that specific thing applies and when it doesn't? Do they know that the numbers they're presenting about sets and reps don't apply to anybody I currently see? So who is it we're talking about? You see, this is where it all actually boils down to. If you're ready to learn in order to enable with, uh, the outcome for the individual client and the individual patient in order to enable yourself to provide more, see more, understand more. See, that's the fun part of this little deal right here. That overlap, that little triangle, what you know, what you do, and how you deliver it, it all hinges on that individual client, the overlap of those things. And when the client becomes the centerpiece, what you know changes to be not only what you know from a book, but what you know about that individual today, which may change tomorrow. What you do in general for you and what you like, which has nothing to do with what this person needs to have done for them. And how you deliver it, if you love to be yelled at so you can become, if that fake version of motivation is motivating to you, fantastic. But many, 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 many times the compromised people and the real people, they need to be talked to in a way to help them understand, in a way to actually get inside of them and help them explore themselves and pay attention and in order to focus. Focus can often be a better version of delivery than screaming. So there, 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 there ends the question. Why are you in all this? And who are you really looking out for the most. If it's your clients and your patients, you're at the right place.